Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf, Babakama Daf Kuf Yud Gimel. We are on Kuf Yud Beis Amad Beis, two lines off the bottom. Continuing regarding the Bezdin, who is summoning a Baal Din, a litigant, who uh, at times is perhaps uncooperative. How do we deal with it? Amar Avina, Yahavina Zimna, Apumad Itisa. We can set an appointment, set a time, basically summon the Baal Din, the defendant, by using a, a woman messenger. So basically, if the uh, fellow is not around, and we know this woman is heading in that direction, we send a message with her. Please inform this fellow that a bezin is waiting for him at the appointed time. Or we can use the, the, the fellow's neighbor. So we uh, get a hold of the neighbor and say, look, next time you see this fellow, tell him we're looking for him. Vilaya Mara, and this is only to be tried, Ella de Lesse Bimasa. We only do this when the fellow is not around, he's not in town. In this case, we say, look, uh, the, uh, the neighbor, etc., is certainly going to pass on the message knowing that we didn't uh, reach him yet. So they'll do their job. Aval Ise Bimasa, but let's say the fellow is currently in town. Loy, we don't make use of these messengers. You know why? They might be negligent. In fulfilling their duties, like the arena, we, we uh, speculate, Amar, perhaps, like Amrle, they never passed on the message to this fellow. Why the Amri? Because they're thinking, oh, probably he uh, he met up with the uh, official shliach of the bezin, and they don't really need our services anymore. Ashichinu shliach of the bezin, shliach of the bezin certainly met this fellow in the street. The Amrle, and he passed on the message from the bezin in an official, formal fashion. So perhaps they were lax in fulfilling their mess, their shlichus, and they didn't pass on the message. But if he's out of town, in that case, uh, or they're not thinking along these lines that he met up with the shliach bezin, and certainly they'll pass on the message. One more thing, it's only said, When do we say that we assume they passed on the message? Only when this fellow is not bound to walk by the, uh, the door of the bezin on the way home. In which case, they'll ensure that he gets the message. But but if the fellows know that this person will be passing by, Khalif means passing by Ababad Bedina in front of the doorway. He'll be passing by the Bezdin's doorway, light. Right? They know he's passing by on the way home. So in this case we can't rely on them. You know why? Same concern. Amri they'll think. Certainly the Bezna already noticed him and gave him the message themselves. And furthermore, we don't make use of these, you know, informal messaging systems. Unless this fellow is scheduled to return home that day. So, you know, it's, it's a short enough time, we assume, they'll remember to pass on the message. But if he's not coming back today, we can't rely on them. Ema because perhaps Ishtalu Ishtali they forgot and they never gave passed on the message so we can't re- really rely on that unreliable system. Amarabha So Psicha once again is a star, a document, putting this fellow in Khairam for not cooperating with the Bezin and not responding to the summons of the Bezin. So we write a Psicha on this fellow, Adalayasiladina, for a fellow who hasn't uh, showed up to the Bezin. At what point can we cancel, can we revoke? this uh, document. Ad the Asila Dina, unless he actually personally shows up to the Bezin, we don't destroy the document, despite the fact that this fellow is claiming to be on his way. You show up, fine. Otherwise, Ad the Lloyd Sayas Ladina, but in a case where a fellow is not cooperating in terms of, you know, repaying a loan, etc. So we have to, you know, resort to this drastic measure of writing the Psich on him, but in this case, we're a bit more easy on him. Because it's a matter of obtaining funds, we uh, added sayis. Oh, one second. So the Gemara at this point says, no, until he actually cooperates and he follows through with paying, whatever, uh, in fulfillment of the Bezdin's you know, verdict, we don't tear up the, we don't revoke this status. The Gemara disagrees. You know, when it comes to repaying, you know, 
sometimes things are difficult and it takes a it takes him a while to obtain the funds. Give it the Amr Tsayasna. Once he declares his willingness to cooperate and to conform, Karina Lee, that's enough for us to revoke this status, hoping that he'll really conform. Amr Abchizda, furthermore, Kaivin Zman, a fellow who's not showing up to the Bezin on the appointed time, we, uh, we, uh, we're, we're patient. We delay and we delay until we actually you know, need to resort to drastic measures. So we appoint another time, another appointment. Shani, come on Monday. Vechamishi, okay, he doesn't show up on Monday. We give him another chance. Thursday, which is the time of the Bezin, right? When they hold court, Monday and Thursday. Vishani, and finally, if he doesn't show up then, we give him a third chance next Monday. Zimna, so one appointment. Vizimna, basa zimna. And another one following another one. Ulamachar, now if he doesn't show up on the following Monday, Come the next morning, Kasvinan, Allah Psicha, we resort to the Psicha, you know, the Cherem system. Right? So, as Rav Asi Iklo Be Rav Kahana. So, Rav Asi happened to be by Rav Kahana, you know, by the Bez and Chaza, he noticed, Hai Itasa, there was a certain woman, the Azman al Adina of Apanya. So, at the, uh, uh, um, the night time, during, during the evening, she was. Call to the to the din, and already the next morning, but suffer the next morning. Counsel of psicha, Rav Kana wrote the psicha for uncooperation. Okay, she didn't heed to the 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 heed the summons of the bezin. She was non cooperative. We wrote a, a psicha and put her into cherem without much uh, you know uh, uh, notice. Omar Laser of Asi was surprised. He says to him, Rav Kahana, Don't you know about Rav Chizda, who, who says we give a fellow many, many chances, Kraven's man, right? Shani, Why are we just jumping to uh, drastic measures? Omar he responds like this. Hanimi That only pertains to a man. The honest, who's busy, you know, uh, with, his, with, his, with his business. Velesi Vimasa, sometimes he's not in town. So, you know, we stretch it for him, we give him added time. Abel Itzis about a woman who's typically local, given Itzis of a Masa, she's around in town, and she's still not coming to the Bezden, my Redesi. She's uh, rebelling and deserves this, uh, this punishment. Amrav Yuda. We don't make appointments for the, uh, for the Bezden. During the uh, cropping season, during the harvesting season. Nisan and Tishri. Because people are busy and it's unfair to uh, force them to come to Bezna at that time. And likewise, loy bimalu yamitava, nor on erev yamtiv, loy bimalu shabbat, or on erev shabbos. But avol minisan. But let's say we send them a summons on, you know, during the the month of Nisan. But the appointed time is after Nisan. Labasu yaminisan. Or Ubiyemi Tishri, we summon him on Tishrei time, or Lubasa Tishrei to come after Tishrei when the harvesting season is over. Kavina, that's fair. Mimali Shabbat, however, to summon him on Erev Shabbos, which is a super busy day, Lubasa Mali Shabbat, even if the point is to come after, you know, after the Erev Shabbos, to come on Sunday, like Kavina, we don't. Proceed that way. Why? My time and why Bavintate the Shabbat authority is so preoccupied with preparations for Shabbos. And as Rashi points out, by the time Sunday comes around, he might have forgotten about the whole thing. Amr of Nachman. Likewise, Loyavinan Zimna. We don't uh, uh, invite the litigant to the, to the Bezin. Loyavne Kala Bekala. Kala, Rashi says, was the, the Drasha which took place, let's say, on Shabbos, when everyone gathered together to hear the Drasha. We don't find, uh, we don't go uh, seeking the, the, uh, the uh, defendant at the drasha, you know, uh, place to, to invite him to the best. We don't do that. Rigla was the pre, you know, yomtiv gathering where they learned and they had the drasha. Likewise, we don't look for the baldin over there to invite him to the best. You know why, says Rashi? Because we don't want to discourage people from coming to these drashas. So therefore, we establish this practice. We don't pursue them. At the drushes. You know, no, no appeals. He have also committed of Nachman. So when these um, people who had claims uh, would come to Rav Nachman and, um, you know, come to the drasha there to invite their, their Bali Din to the Bezin, he, he shooed them away. He said, no, 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 that's not, this is not the right uh, venue. You think I gathered everybody for your sake? Now's the time to learn. You find them elsewhere. But, nowadays, Dikur Amai. There are all kinds of uh, swindlers 
who will make their business to come to many, many drushes to avoid being summoned by the Bez and Chayshin are concerned, and therefore we change this practice. Now the Mishnah says, Even though the kids inherited uh, this uh, stolen item from their father, they didn't steal it, but if it's something which has Achrayis and Chasim, which is, sim- which is typically a uh, reference to, uh, to real estate property, which is uh, something that secures one's loan and one's uh, you know, responsibilities, so they have to pay. So Rebbe explained to Reb Shimon Breiter, his own son, Reb Shimon, the Mishnah is not necessarily referring specifically to property which the father stole and gave on to the kids. No, not only that. Even if it's just a notable you know, item, a cow which is now being used for plowing, a donkey which is used for carrying loads, if that was passed on to the kids, so they have to return it to the to the uh, the victim because it's not honorable to the for their father to have this item sitting around and have everybody point their fingers at it. Oh, this is the item stolen by their father. So if it's something pronounced and notable, easily identifiable, identifiable in public, it's got to be returned. But how far does this go? What about a mita, a piece of furniture, a bed, a which is used for you know, uh, lying on it. Shulchan va'ichalala, a table on which they eat. So it's not something out in the, you know, out in the street. It's something inside the home, but it's still something, you know, noticeable and outstanding. Mahu, do they have to return it or not? Because people do, you know, walk into other people's homes and notice it, and it's lacking in covet for the father. Armalis, he responded, of course. You know, draw your own conclusions. Of course, ten l'chacham yechkem oid, you teach the chacham somewhat, and he expands on it, of course, the same concept and principle applies to these items as well. Continues the Mishnah. Ain't part. So you have a you know you have a dollar, you want to change a dollar. You don't do that. You can't use the money at the moiches, the tax collector collected. You can't use that, you know, the, the that uh, cash register to change your dollars. Because we want you to keep away from that money which is you know dishonestly collected. nor. I meant to make use of the um, the, the pouch or the, uh, the you know the money bundle, the, the chest used by the gaboin, those who would collect the head taxes, which typically were uh, you know done in an unfair fashion, and therefore the chacham instituted a kind of keep away from these uh, cases, keep away from these monies, keep away from these funds, lest we encourage this type of dishonest behavior. Vein neitlmehem tzdaka. Likewise, we don't accept donations from these people. But you can go and change your dollar, change your money um, using this fellow's private account, you know, in, you know, or his public, you know, his business account, as long as it's not um, tapping into the funds which he uh, which he collected for for this tax for this uh, you know under this tax collection umbrella. Tana, but we learned in the price there are some exceptions. Suppose you're approached by the tax collector and you owe him, you know, 50 cents. You can give him a dollar and have him return 50 cents because otherwise you're going to lose the money. So although he's pulling it out of his, you know, uh, tax fund, it doesn't matter because as Rashi says, you're you're salvaging your, uh, your property. The question is, why are we regarding a as a tax collector, as a, as a dishonest fellow who steals? Or Meichsen? Why are they considered Gazlanim? Va'amar Shmuel, doesn't Shmuel tell us the law of the land is valid? Dino de Malchusa Dino, the din established and instituted by the authorities, has validity. So, this fellow collected the taxes, you know, in representation of the king, is not stealing from you. Omar Rav Chanina, Bar Kahana, Omar Shmuel, we have one of two options. Either of a she'en like he collects taxes by his own whim, without a you know a standard set fair rate system. So that's dishonest, and this fellow is a gazlan. Tvera Biani Amri, who's another terrorist, b'meichus oimid me'ela. He's just uh, collecting by his own uh, you know initiative. He's not representing the king. He has no right to do that. Ikot the maslaha. Others apply these two terutzim to a different Allah, a different mission, 
which says, Lo yilmash adam kilayim. A person should never wear kilayim, a mixture of wool and linen. I feel like I'll be God, even if it's, you know, over 10 layers of clothing. Why would he do that? Lavriach ba'is ha-mechas. Because they wouldn't charge customs for, you know, one's personal garments. So a person shouldn't layer himself with kilayim. Although it's not really directly benefiting from the kilayim, it's just to sort of avert the customs payment. Now, Masnison, this Mishnah, which doesn't allow this type of uh, you know uh, conduct, the like Rabbi Kiva is not going like Rabbi Kiva, who allows one to wear kilayim under these circumstances because it's not considered direct hano. It's not benefiting from the actual kilayim. The son Yasalavriach Bohem Samechas, one may not use kilayim in this fashion to outsmart the customs agents. Rabbi Shimon Oyim and Shimon Rabbi yeah, you're allowed to do that. Muta Avriach Samechas. Now the Gemara says like this: Bishlam Elin in kilayim. So with respect to the halach of kilayim. Balkamifli, the machlekes is like this. Why would you? Why wouldn't you? Oh, the Mar Savar, Dovar, Sheim Neskavan Mutter. Rabbi Kiva holds, he's not really intending on benefiting from the Kalayim garment. He's just wearing it temporarily to avoid the system. So that's not considered enough from Kalayim, it's Mutter. Umar Savar, Dovar, Sheim Neskavan Asr. The other Shita disagrees. At the end of the day, you wear a Kalayim, even though you're not directly benefiting it from, it, from it, it's us. Okay, so now we understand. But now, what about the basic question here? How could you do this to begin with? How could you bypass the customs? We learned the way of the land. The laws of the land of the, of the Melech are legal, are valid. And Rashi points out, we're speaking that there was a Jewish agent who sort of purchased the rights from the king to collect the taxes that year. So it's his money, it's his legal income. You can't deprive him of that income. Oh, both roots. Either there's no set rate, it's a, it's a dishonest system, or he's his own guy, he's not representing the authorities. Now there was yet a third version in terms of applying these two tiruts. A different mission in Mesechas and Dor. Noidrin, Laharogin. A person is allowed to make a nether, Laharogin, when he's being threatened bodily. Or Laharam, a person's going to kill him, or a person's Haraman who's going to, uh, you know, extort his money. Or Lumayrsan, tax collectors. What's he saying? Well, this, uh, this crop here that you're trying to take from me, Shishal Truma, you know it's Truma, even though it really isn't. So he's pretending that it's Truma. Shishal Beis HaMelech belongs to the authorities. Even though it's untrue, even though it's not really true, it doesn't belong to the king. And the question now is, how is one permitted to make a nether to avoid paying taxes? Here come the two tirutzim, and actually a third one as well. So firstly, it's an unfair system, unjust tax collection system. He's doing it on his own without authority. Rav Ashi Yomai comes a third terrorist. Moichas Kanani. He's a guy. He's a guy tax collector. So in this case, one can avoid it. The son, we have a, a b'risa. Yisrael Kanani Anas. You have Yisrael, who's, um, you know, having a, 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 a court case with a guy. Shemol Adin. They come to the Din Teira. So the Allah is, you can make the Yisrael win. Using any formula you, you wish to, to, to apply. If it works to use the Dini Yisrael, the Din Torah, to make the Yisrael win, you can do that. You tell the guy, look, this is the way we conduct ourselves. On the other hand, if you know that you can use the Gaish laws to make the Yisrael win, you can do that as well. Make the Yisrael win and turn to the guy and explain, look, this is your laws. If none of these are helpful. Boinal Vakifin. So Rashi says Balila is make up some type of you know uh, alibi and you get the Israel to win. Divir Bishmo, that's a shit. Rukiva you have to be careful. In Boinal Vakifin, you can't do that. You can't manipulate the outcome if Nikidash Hashem if there is a risk of running a Khil Hashem. Says the Gemara, for Rabbi Kiva Taimo, Dik Kiddush Hashem. Rabbi Kiva is only concerned about this factor. Oh like a Kiddush Hashem, but otherwise there's no issue of Kiddush Hashem. He'll never figure it out. So, boy, you can manipulate the guy. Really? The gazel knani mishari is one allowed to steal from a guy. Vatanya on Rab Shimon davar zedarish of Akiva. Akiva himself taught us the drasha. When he came back to Sheba from the town of Zfirim, Mizfirim, Menayin. How do we know the gazel knani shu'asim? One may not 
Steal from a guy. Tamaloima Achar Nimkar Gula Tialoi. This is a, a Yisrael, a slave, who was sold to a guy. How do we redeem him? By paying him out. Shalom Shechen Aviyetu. You can't just kidnap the Yisrael, force him out. You have to pay, uh, you know, rightfully, whatever, whatever the guy, guy owns, whatever, whatever the, um, the, the evidence is worth. But on the other hand, Yachal Yiglim Allah, perhaps we allow the guy to uh, double, triple charge him to extort money. No. Tamaloim Avachishim Koneyu. Yudaktikim Koneyu. Be meticulous and accurate in. Exact in terms of how much he gets. So how could we go ahead um, and and you know manipulate the dentira to the detriment of the guy? Omar of Yosef, oh big difference. Like Asha, Habek Nani, Habek Gertoshev. The Psukim here, but the Evid are speaking about a Gertoshev, a guy, but he's you know sort of halfway in. He keeps the Shev and Mrs. Minayach, so we're more careful we protect his finances. But in the previous price, we're speaking about a plain guy. Amrli Abayi, what do you mean? About Tarvayu Gabayad Adiksivi. Go look at the psukim describing the Eved sold to the guy. It covers both scenarios, a regular guy or a Gerotosh. And in both cases, we protect his finances. Loy Lecha, the Pastor the Bryce says, well, sometimes the Eved will be sold to Yisrael, not only to you, if his situation degenerates, Hashem brings him to even a, a, a bigger issue. El Ger will be sold to a Ger, Shanem El Ger, Velel Ger Tzedek, not only a Ger Tzedek, a regular Ger El Ger Toisha, a guy who's keeping the Sheva Mitzvahs. That's how desperate he'll get, he'll sell himself to a guy, Shanem El Ger Toisha. And the Apostle continues, Mishpach has Ger, he can come to the point that Hashem will compel him to sell himself to a guy, to the family of a Ger, which is Goyim. And the Apostle continues, that means, He'll be sold to a church. So clearly, we have all types of options. Sold to a real guy, sold to a Gerotosh, and still the Pasuk says, be careful. Redeem him before taking him out. Elam HaRav HaLikash answers like this. Kam B'Gzele, outright Zele is not permitted. V'kan B'Avkas HaVa'asai. But to alleviate yourself, to free yourself from repaying the guy that's mutter. And that's what we were speaking about before. So, the case of the of the uh, din over there. So if you can somehow manipulate in a way that the uh, Yisrael will be putter from paying, that's okay. But in the case of the Evid, you're taking the Evid from the guy that's outright Geneva. And that's not allowed even by a guy. I'm only Abayi. So Abayi asks him, why is that considered outright stealing? Evid Ivri. It's also half Ka'as Hava Asahihu. You're undoing the Hava, which means like this. Well, the guy paid for the Evid, right? He purchased the Evid to work for him such and such years. So basically, the Evid owes him it's a debt. And now you're pretty much just canceling that debt. You're not fulfilling, you're not repaying. If the Evid leaves without working those years that he owes him, he's just not paying him a debt. That's Kafka Sava Ase. So why is that Ase? Rava, who did not consider that to be just an alleviation of debt, rather he considered that to be outright Geneva, Rava Tamei, Rava follows his opinion, the Amar Rava, Evid, even a Jewish slave, even though you don't own him forever, it's only sort of a, you know, a usage right, so to speak, but that's considered an inherent ownership within the Evid itself. You own him for usage. So in this case, wiggling him out of the guy would be considered, would constitute Gezel. Amar of baby bar gedl, Amar of shimma chasida. Gezel kanani asr, or may not steal from a guy. Avidos and muteris. But if one finds an item lost by a guy, there's no need to return it. Gzele Asr, outright stealing is Asr, why? Amrav Huna. Menayin le Gezla Khan Shu Asr, we find another source. That Gezla Khan is Asr Shinamar, the Achalta is Kala Amim, Asha Hashem, Akech Nex and Lacha. You'll consume, you know, the, the nations, nations that Hashem granted you during wartime. Okay, that's different. Bizman Shem, Yasrum Biyatcha, when they're given to you during war, that's fine. If a Lib is man, Shainam, Surum Biyatcha, otherwise not. Avidasai is muteris, but his lost item may be kept. How do we know that? How do we know you can keep an aveda of a guy? Why not? Why do you keep an aveda of a guy? It only pertains to your brethren. An item lost by a yid must be returned. But not something that belongs to a knani. I want to ask Rabbi Shroll Belsky, that's all. You know, the young boy, I said, you know, how would a guy look at this? Where's the fairness? Where's the yashris? We only return an Aveda to Yid, not to a guy. He told me, look, you know, you know it, it's an extra thing. We're part of the club. We sort of have a, a, a Jewish fraternity, right? We sort of have this, sort of, sort of have this you know, uh, a commitment. 
personal commitment to each other that will uh, will conduct ourselves in this sort of leflimish or sadin, you know, modus operandi. But it's not required. So dafka yid, we have the special sort of joint agreement we cover for each other. But if it's an aved of a guy, it's rightfully yours. Okay, simple as that. Says the Mabeiman Emili, Hechad Lasli Yadi. Maybe this only applies where the item has not yet been taken in by the Yisrael. It's sitting on the street. Okay, I'm not machayiv to return it. Right? Not responsible. I don't have to go find the guy, right? But let's say the Yisrael already picked up the item. It's in his possession. So perhaps in this case, perhaps in this case, he has to go return it. So the pause that we mentioned is speaking perhaps about pursuing. But if you have it already, Amra vino matzasa, the word of matzasa, which the Pasuk mentions, is clearly indicative of something which you already have. The asoil yadeh mashman still, only to a yid, not to a guy. Tanyo, here we have an exception. Rapinchas ben yoyer eimer. B'mokham sheish chil Hashem, what is a concern about chil Hashem? Where the guy might take offense, if it's, let's say, a Jewish village, and they know, Yisrael found it, why isn't he returning it to me? Ah, filu avidase asr, in this case, even a goyish aveda must be returned. Amar Shmuel, here comes another twist, ta'usoy muteris. If, you know, during, you know, some sort of business dealings with the guy, you notice that he made a mistake, you have no obligation to go rectify it. Kyo de Shmuel, as we find with Shmuel himself, Zavar Mikuti, he bought from a guy, lakna, this container, the hava which was really gold, but the guy didn't realize. He thought it was copper, but Mar the parcel. He thought it was just a copper container. He charged him very little, four coins. Not only that, he mistakenly took three coins instead of four. But Dalaz was, the evil of skipped over one coin, only gave him three. And Shmuel just walked away. That's called Tos Akum. That's fine. Rav Kahana, Zavan Mikusi, Meo. We have another story of Rav Kahana, who purchased from a guy, Meo of Esrim Chabisa. It was supposed to be 120. It was 120 barrels, but Meo, but he only thought, he thought it was only a hundred, he charged him for a hundred. Not only that, he skipped a coin. He skipped a coin, he gave him, he gave him one, one coin less than he deserved. So Rav Kahana was careful. Amr, he told the guy, look, Chazi, look, pay attention. You want to count, count. I'm relying on you. This way, he freed himself of any you know, future suspicion or claim. Ravina Zavan Dikla Hubikusi Ravina had a partnership with a guy and he purchased this palm tree for firewood, the Tzalcha. Amr Lashami, so Ravina turned to his uh, helper, called him by Isimi Ikari. Go quickly get the, you know, the, uh, the parts from the bark, which are thicker. Because the guy, the Kusim, and Yana Yada, he knows numbers. He knows five pieces for me, five for him. But he won't realize that those are thicker, and that's okay. Rabbi Ashi, Rav Ashi was traveling on the road. Chaza Shibsha the Gufni. He saw these vine uh, branches. The Pardisa in this vineyard, the Tali, but Ketufi, the Envy, on which there were clusters of grapes. Amalek um, Lashami turns to his assistant, Zil Chazi, go take a look. Who owns the field? Ida Kusininu, I see. If it belongs to a guy, bring me the grapes. Ida Israel Ninu, Loyaisili, if it belongs to Israel, don't bring them. Shama Ukusi, so happens to be that the guy was there. The owner was there, right? Aviyas of Pardisa, he was sitting in the, the, the Pardis, and he overhears this conversation. Amalek, um, he turns to uh, Ravashi, what's going on? What's going on? Ida Kusi Shari, if it belongs to a guy, you let us steal? I'm like, no, says the Rashi. Chas for Shom. Matayis says he really meant this. Kusi shakel dmei. I want to pay, but I know the guy would accept payment from me. Yisrael, I shakel dmei. If it's Yisrael, he won't want to take money from Ravashi. So therefore, I wanted to ensure that it belongs to a guy. This way, I'll be sure to pay for the purchase. Kufa, we go back to the halacha. Marshmol, dina the machus dina the what law of the land is valid. Amar Rava Teda, how do we know it's valid? The katli dikli. Look, the authorities chop down. You know. Uh, palm trees, Bagashri Gishri, and they build with it, uh, with the wood, with the lumber they use for constructing bridges. Rabbi Nalai, well, walk over the bridges. Apparently, even though they um, sort of expropriated private property, you know, with eminent domain, they uh, chopped down private trees, it's put to public to use, and we use it. Dina no chosadim. Amalei Abayi. So Abayi respond. How do you know it's based on that? Maybe it's because the owners of these trees gave up on them. So that's why you're allowed to use it. Not because of Dinah Machosad Dinah. Or Malaysia, he says like this. Yish would not be effective in this case. Eloi Dinah Machosad Dinah. If not for the, the concept of Dinah Machosad, Hechem Yashi. How does the Yish take effect? Rashi explains. It's merely Yish. There's no Shinu Rishus. There's no Shinu Rishus. It didn't change, you know, possession. Because it's still sitting in the street. It didn't really go over to another person's possession. And we need both. The Yish and Shinu Rishus 
to effectively disengage the item from the owner. And likewise, says Rashi, it's not called shini ma'ase. It's not being not considered a new entity because it's still considered palm, uh, you know, uh, palm uh, beams or whatever. So, so therefore, the yush on its own would not really affect that disengagement. The only reason why we can use it is because dinim machus adinim. Ask Skimur, well, what's going on? Dinim machusa permits us to use, you know, the public roads. But typically, they're not honest in the way they collect these, uh, these uh, materials, which are meant to be, you know, equally, you know, the, the, uh, equally collected from all the local, uh, you know, people. But like Avdi, Kedar uh, Malka, the workers are lazy, good for nothing. They don't follow the instructions of the Melech. Look, Malka Amar, the Malka tells them, Zilu v'katlu m'cholbagi. Go over to the whole area, to the whole valley, and go to each person, take five trees. Right? Everybody shares the burden equally. And they're lazy, they don't do that. They just knock down one guy's whole thing. They come to one area and they chop down the whole area. That's not fair. Ultimately, they're representing the king, and just like the king doesn't really have to ask permission, he does what he wants. So, they do what they want, and they have the authority, even though it's not really the proper system, but ultimately, legally, it works. Right? If it would be the king himself, he wouldn't burn himself to go and, uh, you know, make this whole arrangement. And ultimately, truth is, ultimately, the owner of this knockdown, uh, you know, orchard really causes his own loss. Why? Because ultimately, they have a right to go make a collection amongst the other, you know, residents. The boiler, they should have they could be cool, they should have gone to the whole area of Mishkud Me and collect as compensation. So ultimately they, they you know they brought about their own loss. So true, the fellows are lazy, good for nothing, they shouldn't be doing this. But at the end of the day, this fellow has some form of recourse, he can go and, and you know recollect his losses, and he's not doing that, so it's his problem. Amarov. Man the Vidari. So we have, let's say, you know, four partners in the farm. And they're all threshing their, their crops, they're going home with it. One guy's left in the, in the um, granary. The fellow, unfortunate fellow, who the uh, tax collector encounters in the granary, he has to go pay for everybody. And then he goes, of course, and gets it back from the rest of the people. That's the law. The uh, IRS collector doesn't you know, make the rounds. He catches one fellow, and this fellow has to go turn around and collect from the rest. That's only pertaining to partners, because he's really a part owner. Let's say this fellow who the IRS collector encounters in the granary is just a plain sharecropper, just a worker. He's just taking his own portion, meaning he's not really a part owner, so the uh, collector has no right to expropriate this poor fellow's commission. Miavet is like a mashkin. Basically, it means like this that all townspeople are responsible for each other in terms of paying taxes. <laughs> Interesting system. So basically, if the collector only finds one fellow he can take from him, he decides to take from him, and this fellow has to now go and compensate himself by going and collecting from everybody else, you know, in terms of their portion of their taxes. That only pertains to tax, which is, you know, on the local land produce. The cargo or tax, which is like a head tax. Daishata pertaining to this year. So 2016. Okay, I'm taking everybody's taxes from you. You go find, the, find everybody and, and track him down. Avoshata the Khalaf. But let's say it's last, last, he's still collecting last year's taxes. He can't deploy this system. Malka Khalaf. Once the king was already satisfied, because we explained before, this tax collector is sort of like a commissioned fellow. Right? He t- collects a certain amount of taxes and gives it to the king, and then you know he gets the rest or whatever. So once the king has been satisfied in terms of last year's tax, he's fully paid up. So now he's not really coming with that full authority. He's just making up for lost income that, you know, that the people still owe, but he doesn't have that same force and he can't employ this sort of, you know, um, joint responsibility type of system. He can only go to, you know, one person at a time in terms of his personal tax account. So diary pertains to a practice was where they used to go and like sort of corral their animal. They used to bring it to an area to sort of, um, you know, uh, um, uh, fertilize the fields. So let's say the Goyim brought their animals together. Now it's within the city limits and they have a bunch of animals. Also, Likach man, you're not allowed to buy an animal from them. 
Let's say they offer an animal for sale. You can't do that. My time, you know why? Because chances are, some of the local animals, the chiyus of the masa, the local city animals belonging to Israel, got mixed in over there. And they're selling it as if the goyim are selling those animals as if it's theirs. So you can't buy from them. But but if it's outside the city limits, outside the tchum, there you know the animals are not uh, local animals, they're the goyish animals, and you can buy it from them. But if you see the owner running after, oh, where's my cow? Where's my cow? Even though it's far from the city, keep away from stolen goods. Okay, bottom line, we learned about summoning a baldin, an uncooperative baldin to the basin. When we do it, when we don't do it, the exact system, how we carry that out. We learned about keeping away from stolen goods, from dishonest tax, tax collectors. Why are they dishonest? Either they're employing an unfair tax code or they're not representing the king. We have third terrorist, it's a Moichas Knani. And that explains our mission, explains the Allah of Kalayim, explains the Allah of doing a nether to fend off these uh, um, you know, dishonest people. We learned about Gezel Knani, which is Asr, Afka Asal, Asa is Mutter, Tausa is Mutter, the Aveda Bagoy is Mutter. But in all cases, we have to be careful from, uh, to avoid Chil Hashem. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of a lot of uh, times he didn't go ahead and, and, and give up on this uh, on the heter of Kasa or whatever in order to earn a kiddush to, to generate a kiddush Hashem. And then we uh, capped off with the idea of dina machos how and when it applies. All the best to you and Aslacharava.